welcome one and all to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Fartuk-55. Last time we listened in, the party had returned to Colby and been hailed as heroes. Fargus Stoutheart had spoken with Winnie, the pretty barmaid, and discovered that his viewpoint of their relationship was not shared by the hedonistic young woman. Karina excused herself to spend time with Peepers, while the rest of the crew sat down for a meal. We returned to Colby in mid-afternoon with the group wandering around town trying to determine what to do next. Well, I for one would enjoy taking a closer look at the owlbear, said Sister Elaine, cleric of Dilo. I think it would be interesting to see what problems mages create. No offense, as she nodded to Lady Irena, who waved off the comment without judgment. Cabe and Fargus did not look so optimistic, pointing out that the creature could be very dangerous and extremely deadly if part of a pack. The cleric countered, with only them spotting one, there didn't seem to be much to do around here, and that seemed like the likely option. The others agreed, and Lady Irena asked Bulger his opinion, but retracted her statement when she realized he was leaving in the morning. She apologized, and the gnome shook his head, implying that there was no breach of etiquette. Fargus spoke up, pointing out that the whole point of leaving Phoenix was to explore the frontier. He added that they were on the cusp of it and should stay the course and move out in the morning. Lady Irena questioned if they would travel by foot, take the ox cart, or purchase some horses and ride in style. The group weighed the pros and cons of each mode and finally agreed that the last choice seemed to be the best. Cabe felt that they could trade in the cart for a cut rate on the mounts, but added that everyone should be present to make that decision. They returned to the Comstock Inn to freshen up a bit and fetch Karina. Sister Elaine and Lady Irena entered the room to find a dejected bird sitting on the floor watching Karina who had obviously been crying. The woman inquired about the issue and quickly determined that it was a case of broken heart. The woman sat down and listened to how close Karina and Eddie had become and how much she knew about them. The ladies learned that with all her time in the orphanage, she'd never known anyone as deeply as she had Edward in the short time they had together. Sharing life experiences with the waif, the women explained that the good things were still on the horizon for her, and, most likely, true love was still waiting. She questioned the knowledge of both ladies in a rather curt tone, but softened her stance after learning that Sister Elaine hadn't always been a cleric, and the elven mage had lived longer than both of the ladies put together. Wiping away the tears, she apologized for her tone, and the three had a great big hug when a loud knocking on the door broke up the moment. Come on! What are you guys doing in there? bellowed out Fargus the ranger. Sister Elaine snapped the door open just as the human attempted to knock again. Looking at the three, he flatly demanded to know what was going on in the room. Lady Irena pushed him out of the way, pointing out that they had been changing clothes and were naked, which caused the human to quiet immediately. Karina laughed at his puzzled look, which quickly turned into frustration. He shut the door, leaving peepers behind, and followed the ladies down the stairs. Once in the common room, they filled in Karina about the mount situation, and she seemed fine with their choice. They then obtained the oxen team and cart, and headed to the stables. Several blocks near the outskirts of town, they found the livery, and the half-orc proprietor named Buck Savage. Knowing that elves and orcs do not mix well, it was decided that Sister Elaine would be the spokesperson for the group. She and Buck spoke at great length as to what they had, what they wanted, and what they were willing to spend. During the discussion, Buck continually looked at Cabe Silvertongue repeatedly, which was very disconcerting for all. After several minutes, the distraction was too much to handle, and the bard broached the issue. Do you have a problem with me? asked Cabe to the half-orc. The livery master stared back blankly and shook his head no. He then addressed Cabe with, I'm wondering why you aren't doing the negotiating in this matter. The comment caught the group off guard and both Cabe and Irena were a bit uncomfortable. 
<clears throat> well, why would I do that? asked Cabe. The half-orc then began to explain that it seemed like the logical choice for the banter as they were both the same. His remark struck a chord with the bard who bristled and inquired why the livery master thought they were the same. Leaning against a shoeing anvil, the half-orc motioned to both of them and replied, We're both half-breeds. As part of both and neither world, we share common ground. It seems to me that we would have more in common. No offense, Reverend Daughter. None taken, my good man, she replied. We just thought because of the racial tensions between the... Well, the... But she couldn't find the words to explain further. The livery man snorted strangely, causing the discomfort to fade before he continued. Uh, my apologies. Sometimes I share my paternal traits too much and come across crass. I meant no disrespect to any of you. You have already gained quite a reputation in town, and I shouldn't assume that you would try to rake me over for a few coins. Normally, some patrons would try and get the best terms to tip the monetary scales in their favor. It appears my previous encounters do not come into play here. You are not my normal customer base. In an effort to calm the issue, Fargus spoke up and pointed out, Damn right we aren't normal. This retort caused Bulger and Sister Elaine to smack their heads with their hands as the others stared at the ranger with low eyes looking at him. Cabe looked back at the livery manager and apologized. We should not have been so quick to judge either. My apologies. The two discussed the proposal that Sister Elaine had presented, and they came to an equitable situation. Mounts were picked up, but Bulger did not move. The half-orc asked him if he was displeased at the options, but the sailor explained that he would not be headed east, and he would be going west, back to Phoenix, to find a ship. As he explained his position, a black-and-white palomino approached and snorted loudly before rubbing up against the gnome. The half-orc nodded at the explanation and returned the money to Cabe, who had given to Bulger, adding that he was due more later. The half-orc told the group that the horses and tack would be ready to go in the morning, and he would see them then. He took the oxen team and the wagon into the fence, and the group headed off to the chapel for the funeral service for the guards. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.